it's super frustrating because now look at the situation that I'm in. Less than a month to handle all this stuff and what am I gonna do? Hey guys, what's up? I am so irritated right now. I am so frustrated, so stressed out. And I just need to vent because I just need to let it all out. I am looking a mess right now, I know, but listen, it is so, so, so important that you stay on top of your chain of command. You stay on top of your paperwork, the different sections, everything that has to get done, whether you're going to school, whether you're PCSing, whether you're ETSing, you need to make sure that you stay on top of everything because I've heard of situations where people get their school dates and stuff pushed back because paperwork didn't go through or paperwork kept getting lost. Your ETS gets delayed, your PCS gets delayed, and it's crazy because I think Think I might be finding myself in that situation and it's crazy that I'm in this situation because I've always been on top of me leaving like I've always been on top of it trying to make sure everything happens when and how it was supposed to happen I re-enlisted for this position back in 2018 okay October 2018 is when I re-enlisted to reclass so I literally just been eating up over a year of this contract just waiting to go to school so trust me <laughs> I've been preparing and comes around June when I decided I'm like okay I have less than a year before I have to go ahead and get out of here. Let me start doing what it is that I need to do. So that's what I did. I ended up getting a new NCO and I was telling him like, listen, I am reclassing. I will be leaving this place in March and I need to get all of this stuff in order. I'm telling him I'm a single parent. I have two kids. So I have a lot of stuff that I have to figure out and I have a lot of stuff that needs to be in place prior to me leaving so all of this stuff was not a secret to my chain of command they were well aware that i was leaving and when i had to be gone and it just did not occur to them that this is for real so i've been focusing on or trying to get myself situated for the longest time but again the replies i kept getting was oh you don't have to worry about that right now you have more than enough time just focus on your work and we'll get to it when we get to a type of thing the issue that i'm having is i have to pcs okay i am supposed to be leaving so i can go train to become 68 charlie so the first issue i was originally told that they would be holding two different pt sessions not that you do pt twice but there's pt held in the morning for a group and then a pt held in the afternoon i was thinking that would be perfect because i can just do pt in the afternoon that way i didn't have to do pt early in the morning because pt starts at 0 4 35 in the morning which isn't a problem if if the daycares didn't open until 0 5 30 and it's a possibility my son's daycare won't open until 06. PT is from 4.35 to 06. I was thinking, oh, well, you know, it's fine. I can just do PT in the afternoon. Mm -mm. Nope, got the email back today. There's only one PT session held and that's in the morning. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do in this situation. Like, what am I supposed to do? yes you can sit there and say oh family care plan is beyond a family care plan when you have to have someone working five days a week for you and you're paying them those five days a week to do a service to do a job okay that's not a family care plan I digress well what am I going to do so I asked the I, I asked the drill sergeant because I've been contacting my branch manager I've been calling all different kinds of numbers I have all this stuff in this notebook all these numbers written down in this notebook i've been contacting person person after person emails phone calls all that listen i've tried figuring this out okay i've really tried figuring this out <laughs> so i spoke to the drill sergeant after i got her email back i actually called her and i'm like well is there any type of recommendations like has this happened before because it seems like I'm the first person this is happening to and that can't be the case at all like there's absolutely no way so I'm I'm asking her I'm like well is there any type of way that I can I guess leave my kids behind and be granted a barracks room that way I can have arrangements for my kids and still be able to pay for it and just live in a barracks room since obviously I can't be accompanied after all like I thought I was going to be able to be she goes oh well no because you get BAH so you can't live in a barracks well if I can't bring my kids with me 
I'm going to have to maintain two households. I'm going to be in a financial crisis. I don't understand. She's like, well, well, your order says you can bring your kids. I understand what my orders say, but because my orders say something don't mean it's possible, obviously, because these accommodations would have been met you know it just it just really makes no sense to me i'm like okay so there's absolutely nothing else i can do like that's the only option that i have is to leave my kids at home by themselves basically she tells me well you're going to have to figure out something basically because um the drill sergeants they may they may they may work with you for a few absences but it can't be a constant thing which I understand but you're still not answering my question I need to know how anybody else did this in my situation so I really didn't get anything from there but I just said you know what thank you so much for your help you know thanks whatever the next thing I can possibly think of is to hire a nanny right hire a nanny so I go into care.com I'm looking I'm putting in all the information and I'm like all right I'm adding all this stuff up I'm going to have to figure out how to make an extra $430 a month to pay for this child care. So that's one of my issues. Next issue is housing. I'm trying to understand this. I'm really trying my hardest to understand because I been, I've been calling on post housing, trying to get in touch with someone, trying to ask questions, and I haven't gotten in touch with anyone until today. And I was told that I'm going to get a call back, but I have not received a call back yet. But the information I was able to gather before this nice individual had to get off the phone was it's full BAH, which I believe around there, BAH is around 15 or something. So it's full BAH, which is cool, you know, it's fine. Except the housing that you named off, I know it looks crappy and it don't look clean. <laughs> And so when I asked about the other housing, it's over BAH. So you mean to tell me I have to pay full BAH income out of my base pay in order to pay rent on post? Make it make, you know what? Okay. So you mean to tell me that not only do I have to hire a nanny and have to come up with $430 extra dollars a month, I have to pay out of my base pay another hundred something dollars in order to live in a nice looking place on post really okay I know I have a bunch of people that's gonna say well Starks just go off pose Andrea you can just get a house off pose yeah yeah okay that brings me into my third issue I can get a house off post but I called up to the schools because again guys I have two kids I let them know I'm like hey I'm gonna be PCSing soon my son is in the middle of school and he you know how do I enroll him here I was told that it's gonna to be too late in the year for him to enroll mind you my son if he leaves here in March he's still gonna have March April in May all through May that he still have left to be in school so there's no way he can miss that many days out of school and they don't stop going to school until June out there so explain to me why he's not able to enroll is what I'm trying to figure out at this point so now you're telling me that I have to not only pull my son out of school but he has to sit out of school until the until next year until next year I'm gonna go to jail that is against the law in order for your child to go to school on post when you are in army you have to live on post yeah you have to live on post unless you submit um, I can't remember what it's called but you can submit some form that allows your child to go to school off post the to live off post but go to school on post but that means if I bring him and I I'm off post it's going to be a good chance that he can't go to school on post which is going to put that much more strain on me because now I have to figure out how to get him back and forth because it's just beneficial for me to and I have to pick them up soon it's just beneficial for me to be on post because I can easily just drop him off at daycare the daycare drops my son off at school for me after he's done with school they pick him up and take him back to the daycare so I just go right back there to pick him up at the end of the day which is simple now if he lives off post 
I don't know how it works off post. I don't know how I'm gonna do that off post. So yes, um, it would be nice to be able to live off post because one, it seems like I would be able to save a few hundred dollars, you know, to go towards this nanny fee. I don't understand. And to top all of that off, I'm finally just starting my levy packet. So I have, let's see, less than, what's, what's the day? The day is the 10th. So I have about a month. We're still in the middle of changing command and I'm still in a process of signing over my cage because for whatever reason, people just don't like to come and sign for their property when they're supposed to sign for their property. And I can't clear anyway, sign for property. Like I, I seriously don't know. Um, um, therefore, we can analyze uh, the. So, as it sits right now, because of all these issues. I may not be doing 68 Charlie after all.